Hello, I'm Carol Ambergy, and I'm here today to present a lesson from Artful Learning. I was very fortunate to be able to teach both elementary school for a long time, and then my last 15 years of teaching, I was very fortunate to teach elementary art. The thing I loved about teaching elementary art is that I felt like I got to incorporate so many academic skills. So today's lesson is called Columbus Day Fun. And this lesson incorporates both um, a fun, fun art project and a lot of learning about the way things were about the year 1492. Since we celebrate Columbus Day in October in our schools, I always do this lesson right around that time of year. So this is usually a lesson for first grade and second grade, but I have had um, kindergartners also do it with a little extra help. Now the first graders and the second graders enjoy hearing a story, so I get a little bit of storytelling skills in there as well. But then I might retell the story and actually have some of them role play Christopher Columbus, the kings, the queens, the sailors on the ships, and they really enjoy this little bit of dramatic play. Another resource I sometimes like to use is this book in 1492 by Jean Marzolo and illustrated by, by Steve Bjorkman. And this is a little rhyming book, which the kids seem to like as well, but there are other resources. I'd like to share with you why I think the story of Christopher Columbus is important for children. First of all, when telling his story to them, it's also a story about childhood dreams. It's about hard work and perseverance. It also teaches them a little bit about early maps and how Christopher Columbus's four voyages changed our concept of the earth. It's a story of courage and commitment. It's a story of exploration and discovery. The four things I would like the children to know from this story are the names of Columbus's three ships. This is what they're going to get from doing the art project. And they need to know that it was the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. And the other little rhyme that they should know is, in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Step one of Columbus Day Fun is to prepare the paper to look like an ocean. Now this is a project that might take more than one day. In fact, I've had sometimes, I've had children use two or three days for it. So step one, making the ocean. As you can see here, this is mostly painted. It's a little darker at the bottom for the ocean and a little lighter at the top for the sky. Okay. Also for extra fun. I had some little bit of glitter that the kids with their paintbrush just added to their paint. I have another painted one to show you. This one has, uh, this one shows the glitter a whole lot better. We also talk about the horizon line and what that would look like on the ocean and what it means. If you are more adventuresome and you are willing to try, I have a recipe for homemade finger paint. Homemade finger paint is something kind of new to me because in the classroom I had access to regular finger paint. But if you don't have that at home and you want to try a safe, non-toxic thing and actually making it might be fun with your child too. So basically, you're taking sugar and cornstarch and water and making this globby mess. And then you, you shade it, of course, with just regular food coloring. So for the finger paint one, you might need a little heavier piece of paper. They do sell actual finger paint paper that has a higher gloss to it and is a little more um, slippery. So for this homemade finger paint, I'm going to put this on and I'm just going to spread it. Now I'm just going to get it started 
And of course, being finger paint, it is so much fun. So your kids will absolutely love getting their fingers in it and making their ocean. You can even see the way just that first smear looks really realistic. Now, if you do finger paint, it's probably going to take a little bit more, a little bit longer to dry. Because some of these lumps and bumps are also going to um, need extra drying time. But lots of fun. And you can tell it's not all that messy. And being made just homemade like this, it's probably a lot easier to wash off. Now, finger paint, get it on there. But the big fun comes in creating the waves, which they can do with their fingers. All kinds of waves. I've had kids make uh, fish in there, make it a smoother ocean any way they want. Okay, so finger paint, I guess I haven't outgrown my love for finger painting. And there's a couple of extra fun little things. And since this is homemade and I use just regular food coloring, I'm just going to try this little experiment. Instead of this making all a monochrome, all the same color blue, I just might put a couple of drops on here. I could put it back into the, uh, the mixture that's already made, but this just seems more fun because it's messier. Now, you could probably wear plastic gloves for this. But you see, you get a whole different shade of blue. I think that's kind of cool. As much or as little as you want. Now there's another fun thing to do. They actually sell little commercial uh, things to, to make designs with um, finger paint. But you can make your own just by taking a simple little strip and cutting. You can cut some scallops out of the bottom. You see that? And I guess Mozzie did like all this talk of the ocean. So these are just a couple of little designs in here and look what you can do. Make really cool waves. Okay. Do you have to do that? No, of course not. The thing nice about finger paint is if it gets where you're not really happy with it, you can add just a couple of little sprays of water. You can just go right over it, redo the whole thing. So that's why I really think finger paint is my first choice on this project. Ta -da. And as I said, finger paint will take extra time to dry. So you decide if it's what you want your child to do. So after your, um, your ocean is dry, whether you use tempera paint or glitter paint or whether you use finger paint, when it's dry, we next, uh, our next step is to add the Nina the Pinta and the Santa Maria. Now, depending on how large you make your Nina and the Pinta and the Santa Maria, you may get all three on or you may not. You may put one in the distance too. So that's totally up to you. I'm going to show you an easy way to make this little ship. First, I'll show the children these pictures. They just need to know that the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria were wooden ships. I also found in my picture file a great picture. This looks like it may be uh, a reenactment of the arrival of one of Columbus's ships. Um, nice, it has a nice um, view here of the horizon and the darkness of the ocean and the lighter color sky. So, knowing all of that, they are going to build their own little ships. And they're going to be quite simple. You can take brown paper, plain brown paper, light brown or dark brown, and then I found that I also had some really cool um, already made to look like wood paper. Now my tracers are quite simple. It looks just like this and it will pretty much fit on here. If it doesn't, use it. you can um, just trim it off a little bit. 
This little ship is a little bit smaller and it's really simple. It just has a U cut out of it. And I'm sure with trial and error, you'll do a great job with that. Because they're wooden ships, the kids really enjoy drawing the planks on them. Also put in like the wooden pegs to hold the ship together. So, after they make the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, they need to have the sails. So that is going to be our next step. So Columbus's ship have, ships had a, a number of sails. And to make your sail, it's quite simple. It's just sort of a, a couple of curved lines. Now I'm tracing this with gray. You could also trace it with a, a brown color or a, um, a crayon. I think it kind of gives it the kind of worn and tattered look. On the edges. I've had some kids be really almost realist and really enjoy um, making these sails look old. And you can do that easily just with a little bit of detail on it. Now, I did a little research and this flag, the flag that shows the Red Cross here, um, is actually the flag that's most often associated with Christopher Columbus's ship. So you can use just a simple red marker and make that cross. It seems like it had a little bit of a decoration at the end. You can make it a little bolder like that. Here's another option that you can do. And this one, on this sail, it could have a cross that was traced on a piece of red paper. It gives it a little bit more bold color if you or your child want to do that. That's up to you. That's just, just another option. I really like these sails. Now, to make the masks, I just took a piece of scrap from the paper. Somebody wanted a crow's nest up there because in the Columbus story, it's a big deal when they discover land or signs of land. So it talks about a crow's nest. Okay. So you cut this out, you put the whole thing together and you will have <coughs> a very fun Christopher Columbus project. One of the children actually was inquiring about the actual flag of Spain since Christopher Columbus was granted this voyage and sailors and if he would take the flag of Spain with him. And so they did a little research and found out that the flag of Spain, the early flag of Spain, actually looked like this. So I've had some children try to replicate that on their sails. I wanted to show you this little picture because it shows how much fun the children have with this project. Here you can see that they're having such a good time with their finger painting. And again, this, was, this would be the first day of this lesson. So after the whole thing is together, with the three ships or the two ships, you could maybe just limit it to the Santa Maria if you wanted to. I often had them put on a label. Here is the first line of that poem. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. So, these look really nice lined up out in the hall and it's sort of a fun way to do Christopher Columbus Day. Thank you for watching this lesson in Artful Learning and remember, you can never do too much art and you can never learn too much. So I hope you watch and watch again and share it with your friends and please subscribe. Thank you.